This video is sponsored by Gamos Metal Cruise 2023. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Rauda's sixth episode of Crash Course in the Norwegian black metal from the 90s. Indeed, previous five episodes have catering you the basic information and a little bit of notes of my personal dates about Norwegian black metal bands. And uh, I've already lumped these into different um, groups of bands having a little bit of same kind of themes every episode, starting from the bigger and then slowly going to the smaller ones. However, we're not even near the smaller ones yet with this sixth episode, given three bands per episode. So this time we're tackling bands called uh, Bognaga, Keep of Kalasin and Kampfar. Not exactly the most um, satanic bands out there, definitely not the rawest and all that stuff. So we're gonna go a little bit uh, around the middle path when we're talking about these bands and Norwegian black metal. I mean, if you're thinking about the classic ones like Dark Throne and Mayhem, etc. Well, yeah, they're quite a different breed than the ones here. But nonetheless, that doesn't mean we don't have a reason to check out these bands and talk about them, especially when they were already there quite early on. First in line we have here Bognagar, which was founded in 1994 and already made a debut album in the 90s. That's not so much given even with the bands that were founded in the 90s as you might remember from the previous episode. For example, Tudor, which was there with the, you know, 2000 around a debut album. But Bognaga was already there and actually managed to do three different albums in the 90s. However, of course, we're not just focusing on the 90s stuff, just bands that were already active in the 90s, which were founded in the 90s. And uh, Bognaga being from Bergen, has always been a little bit different than most of their so-called beer blood, true Norwegian black metal bands, because quite early on the band started to shift away from classic black metal. However, I would still say the debut album from 1996 with the rather iconic cover, this old wooden building around, surrounded by fog, is exactly a black metal album. Not maybe in the sense of people who are talking about satanic bands only and openly anti-Christian and all that stuff. Mind you, this was very much discussed with my Borknaga uh, interview uh, from 2022 and uh, those um, against Christianity kind of topics, anti-Christian topics were very much on the table, of course, which I'm personally glad, but that's a different story. However, when it comes to music, uh, Bognaga started to shift away. But what is curious, what if you look at the uh, previous man members list, and this is, in my opinion, very much worth noticing is that band has had quite a few uh, artists over the years and some of them are actually quite famous for other bands. For example, early on in Bognagar lineup you had Infernus of Gorgoroth uh, playing bass. So Infernus was there early on and later on he's been known for other bands such as Augustus. Now also Grimm, the ex-drummer from, uh, for example, Gorgoroth and also Immortal Played in the bands early on, rest in peace. Uh, he was really a some kind of a up and coming rising talent who unfortunately left this world way too early. Maybe most interestingly, however, we had Ivar Björnsson from Enslaved um, and other bands who were there also early on. So if you really took it, take a look at the list, also of not forgetting, but including Gorm of Oliver and Arcturus. On vocals, the early Borgnagar uh, lineup was, in hindsight anyway, very, very fascinating. So you had basically everybody uh, in, from Bergen scene playing something. You had vocalists from uh, and uh, keyboards, effects, drums, bass. You just had it all. And Borgnagar during those days was just, of course, a very different band, but also just pointing out how small scene Bergen can be. This is very relevant as I just came a few days ago from Bergen 
beyond the gates festival and being in the very core of this stuff is actually very fascinating as you kind of start more and more understand how much the scene was all about same people whether it's about Gorgoth, enslaved talk etc they're all coming from that stuff now before i start rambling away too more let's get back to the discography now with the old uh, domain only one year later the band already started to go into different uh, direction and for some people this means, means blessing in disguise whereas some people more focusing on black metal is more like okay bye too bad you left already after the first album and as you can probably see the scores indicate really that some of the people really like uh, for example, the second album or albums like, um, or this is actually split, but the releases which are not that black metal more than the first one. For me, Borgonaga's debut album is however the best, but that just tells uh, more about my taste for black metal rather than that which is here also listed as progressive viking slash folk slash black metal. Now I think this is a little bit misleading because the thing here is, indeed, Bognaga has been somewhat of a progressive metal band for a lot of time and of course folk and Viking topics are right there. But calling it just progressive metal band I think really sums it up. Being on the melodic side and definitely more progressive side of things has always put this band a little bit outside of the Norwegian black metal even though the roots are very much like that. Now coming since the olden domain and the past more than 20 years the band has been doing the one and the same style throughout the years and uh, personally I find the early one the first one as the best but later years these albums like Winter Tries and True North have been actually in my opinion quite an improvement versus the some kind of decline years the band had here earlier on in 2000s of course this is a, this is a matter of taste and depends what kind of angle you're coming from but since we're talking about Norwegian black metal, I guess I could say if you only like black metal and you have very little patience or interest for any kind of a progressive metal, be it Viking or folk teams, doesn't really matter. You can just forget the rest of the disco graph, the first album. There won't be like that and it will be a big disappointment even with the talented vocalist such as for example Winder Sog uh, being in the band for a long time, etc. Now don't get me wrong. Bognaga is filled with talents, be it about drums or guitars or vocalists and all that stuff. It all makes sense if you're into this kind of stuff. However, the, this is very much away from extreme metal. So nothing really here is that extreme. I mean, you might have some raspy parts here and there for the vocals, but doesn't really cut it in the terms of extreme metal. I think not. When it comes to guitar riffs, the compositions, and in general, the whole mood here being more melodic and all that stuff, um, Bognagar has kind of a founded, carved their own way, which is beautiful in its own area and all that stuff, but it's also dividing people into different categories. I would even make the bold statement and say, those who like the first album are not inclined to like the whole discography here. There are people who say like first two are the best ones, but even that is kind of a weird uh, comment in the sense that those two albums don't have much in common really. I mean, it's a big step from Bognaga to Olden Domain and RK Course, etc. And you kind of have to be able to embrace both styles if you're going to like them all. Now, in my opinion, the whole discography is quite steady from Borgnaga, so why me won't even make the statement that the first album is actually the bastard child, the one that isn't all about Borgnaga legacy. But that would be kind of unfair towards the bands because a lot of bands actually kind of evolved into something different after the first years. So, totally depending uh, from which angle you're coming to towards Borgnaga. If you're open-minded and you like all the genres, go for the full discography. I think it's one way or another worth it. But if you are from black metal background and you want to keep it at least relatively grim, there's very little Borgnaga material that it can cater to your needs. The first one is the best one and the rest, well, it's different. But if you have more patience, more time, start with the later ones, I would say, and then go back towards the beginning and you will find this fascinating band uh, carve its own path the way it happened and uh, of course check out the interview if you're interested in Borknaga and knowing the man the band one man in the band who is here if you take a, take a look at this uh, lineup thing is Osten G. Brun uh, still the only ones but 
Like I said, a good vocalist all over the band, whether it's Christopher Ruck, Winter Zog, or ICS Vortex. All very, very talented, even if kind of require somewhat acquired taste or taste buds. All right, off we go to the next band, and now this time it's from Drondheim, which is very, very much more north than Oslo and Bergen, the other main cities for Norwegian black metal. Keep of Kalesin started quite early on 1995. However, their first album is 1997, which I remember for, for this reason being a little bit latecomer. I don't know, this is a weird thing sometimes. Sometimes two bands can have an album out to, uh, say, 1997. And the one band is, the one is considered the fir first part of the second wave of black metal coming from Norway, and some ones are the later ones. Sometimes it's all about in which order you hear the albums, and there is no other way to just describe, because it doesn't really make sense if, if, an, if a band with 1997 debut is considered an old one, and another one is, isn't. However, much like uh, Borgnaga, Keep of Kalesin, Made a couple of albums quite quickly, not as much as three albums by Bognaga, but two albums. And then there was a pause where the band actually started to change. And uh, this is not exactly necessarily a good thing. Once again, since we were focusing on Norwegian black metal, I would say these two first album, especially the debut album through Times of War, but kind of as much as with Agnan and Journey Through the Dark, both of these albums, which are through something, are the key albums by the band known of Keep of Kalasin, which already acted under a different name before that, but that doesn't really count that much. And uh, these first album are, in a way, kind of a Norwegian cut through, so many ways. I mean, I'll try to explain. They have a lot of melodies, they have a lot of fast tempo parts, they have lots of synthesizers and all that stuff, but they are never the rawest, nor the slowest, nor the most brutal, nor the most aggressive, etc. kind of black metal. So they're kind of a falling in the middle. They're not as symphonic as a early emperor, not as progressive as the later emperor, and they never went to as much into Viking territory as, say, enslaved, because they're not a Viking band to begin with. They definitely are not raw as um, Dark Throne, not to mention the raw end of bands. No, they were never as dark as Mayhem. So I'm putting Keep of Kalesin pretty much in the middle of Norwegian map when it comes to the certain genre, sub genre, uh, for the lack of a better word, and all that stuff. But something started to change with Armada 2006, and after that, Colossus was a kind of a obvious um, a successor to that. But things were not the same, not in quality, not in style. And Reptilian, which is somewhat spat on. Uh, isn't that bad of an album, but clearly this uh, one of those albums that put the band in the different part of the map. And for black metal fans, that's a whole different term. Now these later albums, and luckily Cut Hearts is made out, made it out before I made this video and is uh, listening to the whole discography. These are all kind of a logical continuations to Armada and Colossus. But to be honest, nothing has changed for the better anymore. I mean, these are all very listenable albums, but also kind of like forgettable, especially if you're coming towards Norwegian black metal. Now, here it even says on Metal Archives, this is just someone's take, but black metal early, which in my opinion definitely uh, labels these two first most liked one albums. I mean, even if you take a look here, well, right, my music, regular music might have a little bit different take on the albums, but still. It's more like these two albums define the whole band and whatever came afterwards were like a disappointment to a lot of people. It's not just me, not just my friends, but you can see the pattern happening here. You can already see this kind of a decline in review scores and that even if it's not big, it's kind of obvious. Now, what is also interesting that if you take a look at the band's uh, lineup information here, there is only one person from the band and uh, he's still among the... <laughs> lineup from 1995 but the rest of the guys quite new if you take a look at the past members then you will see that there are certain years when things start to change for example three guys bass drums vocals 2000 gone well drummer was back for quite a bit but still also what is worth mentioning is that there are a couple of interesting um previous members like Attila Shihar doing vocals for a couple of years and maybe more interestingly Frost doing drums. Frost of Saturigon and 1349 fame mostly even he has 
other bands as well. So this was also a band that had quite important names back in the days, but for past 20 years, it's not really being the same. What is, in my opinion, interesting is also that this has Vil from Hordom Rife, or had, and uh, this is a quite an interesting connection because these two bands are quite different, where Hordom Rife is going back all the way to kind of a classic Norwegian black metal with more roar and evil sounding black metal. Well, Keep of Kallison was always going into something, something different. So all I'm saying is, even though Keep of Kallison, much like Borgnagar, has its roots in various places and more cult members, it became totally different breed quite af quite soon after early on. I mean, considering the 1995 a starting point, and within five years, basically, the band was different, considering the years 2000 being the place where people left, and which probably explains a lot of this, uh, this gap between the second and the third album. For what it's worth, in my opinion, I would say the two first albums are actually quite good. More on the good side than just okay. And definitely worth listening even to this day. They kind of feel fresh. I hadn't been listening to them for, I don't know, maybe 20 years before making this video. And I still find them like, hey, this is taking me back in a good way. They don't even sound like too old. There's something very modern or more like timeless with the sound and also songwriting. So if you're coming from black metal angle, once again, I would say do with the two first albums. And only if they keep your interest high, then progress with the discography and just prepare for a little bit of impact with reptilian era and stuff like that none of them are bad but they're kind of a mediocrity or maybe say decent versus the first albums right there and off we go to the last band of the park here this is Kampfar also from Norway and um, I don't know how this location really works out here because this is also more or less kind of a um, Bergen based at least partially and Kampfar was already there also in 1994 but unlike some of those other bands, they actually had pretty soon um, some material out. I mean, demo, uh, demo in 1995 and then EP 1996. But much like those two previous bands, the debut album came out 1997. And if you ask me, it's clearly the best comfort album out there. Melom Skugled de Azer. And uh, this is a curious band, but they hear is labeled as pagan black metal. But in essence, it means that Comfort has always been flirting quite a bit with folkier parts. Doesn't matter whether you call it folky black metal or Viking black metal, it's right there. I mean, you hear folky parts like some certain instruments or how the riffs or melodies are made. It's in a way also more melodic than a lot of those more grim black metal ones, which then again, gives the comfort the kind of a, I wouldn't say maybe unique, but definitely trademark sound. There are similarities to talk. However, I would say these are two different kind of bands, even if there are certain elements which really could lump up them in the same box. For some reason, Comfort never became that big. I don't know why, because in my opinion, the consistency throughout the disc record is right there. And uh, they have been making albums pretty steadily. I mean, since 1997 with the debut, a couple of years later, there was Fra Under Vernenen. But maybe this kind of stops with like here, seven years and uh, all that stuff somehow slowed them down. But since Kvaas, two years, three years, three years, one year, Four years so it's not like it's the band has been slowing down even the latest one came only three years later than um, Ophidian's manifest now my opinion about uh, Kampfara is even though they started with the first one then came a little bit like a decline moment for two albums and then it started to get back with you know I'm going Mare and all that stuff all albums are in my opinion pretty good or great like the first album and somehow I kind of wish Comfort was more successful in that sense. They never changed the style too much, even though, of course, once again, if we take a look at the members list, there's only one member, Dolk, who has been here since the beginning. The rest of the guys have been quite some time, at least bass and drums, 2003. I mean, it's already 20 years. And even the drummer has been here more than 10 years. But if you look at the early years, there's only one member who was in the band early on, besides Dolk. 
and he has left the band so many years ago. So it's been, in that sense, maybe so dog-driven band that it doesn't even really matter if the band members have changed over the years and the band has still been able to maintain true comfort, sound and style and all that stuff. Yes, it's definitely more on the folkier and Viking side of things rather than those symphonic bands or raw end of bands or darker aspect of bands. I mean, if you compare this to whatever old school uh, Norwegian bands, be it early, immortal, Dark Throne, Ember, Enslaved, um, and all that stuff, Mayhem, Judah, whatever, it's definitely quite different. Enslaved might be roughly in the same box, but only because they both have these Viking themes and never cared to be the darkest or most evil sounding band in the world. So um, in that respect, Kamfara is right there where it belongs to, between the rawest and the grimmest and also the more soothing bands, I mean the more atmospheric side. So much like Keep of Kalesin, but different reasons, Kamfara is quite middle of the whole map. And in my opinion, it makes it rather good. Seeing them live, for example, last year, Inferno 2022, it was definitely one of the best bands live, even if maybe they're possibly the best. So all these bands, what they do have in common is um, they never made it very deep into the kind of a classic uh, Noor score style, but all a little bit different. Bognagar clearly made it way to the more progressive side of things. Kampfar, kind of a folk here, and Keep of Kales in just kind of a, I don't know, um, made the edges less, left, uh, less edgy and as such created more like a more melodic, easy go sound, even to the Eurovision contest level of shit. I kid you not. Google that shit up if you have to. But all these are pretty interesting and by now they are very steady names having their career for almost 30 years by now. So let's hope all these bands more time in the future. And uh, once again, if you want to know why they are in this list of Norwegian black metal, they all have those in the first albums. Kampfart especially, the first album. Bognaga, same thing, Keep of Kalas in two albums. But Kampfart of all these bands probably kept it more consistent all the way through. So this is a band of these three bands, which I could say, if you like the first album, if you like their rather folky black metal, you can pretty much go through whole discography without being too disappointed. I mean, they never kind of drifted away that much. So there is that. Now, off you go. Check out the bands. You will find links provided in the description box. And um, I hope you like them if you haven't previously listened to them. And the next episode, we'll have something different, something more dead, unfortunately. So stay tuned for episode 7 with Raudas Norskor. No, let's put it black metal from the no black metal from Norway since the 90s. All right, take care and should you have questions or opinions on all that stuff, check it out. And uh, oh yeah, Kampfar interview already agreed. Let's hope to do it 2024 because this year, no chance. Take care and bye bye.